Okay, uh, Chris Peaks here to back here tonight with my good friend Esther for round four of our uh, John Benet Ramsey podcast. Um, I was glad to see that uh, she didn't lower herself to name calling last week. Uh, that was real classy of her to keep it out of the gutter, but um, we'll see how that goes tonight. Uh, Esther, how are you doing this evening? I'm good. How are you, Chris? I can't complain. Great. Um, so, you know, we're going to discuss the um, crime scene evidence tonight. And, you know, again, being the gentleman that I am, I, I will adhere to you unless you want me to, you know, discuss it. Um, yes. Okay. So you want to talk about the crime scene evidence? Yeah. Because we're going to say that and we're going to have the autopsy for a, for a separate one because it's just too much to get in for that. So just the crime scene evidence. Okay, well, the child was found in a top that was different from what the mother said she'd put her to bed in, and she was wearing size 12 underpants, which was odd because this was a slender six-year-old, and she was wearing a pair of boys' long johns that were too small for her, and uh, the body was found in the wine cellar of their basement after the responding officers hadn't been able to find the body, had had looked, had searched the house and, and hadn't seen anything and had left. So uh, when they actually recovered her, there was only one officer at the scene, a detective, and uh, she believed that the father had, had killed the little girl. And- Oh, um, uh, was that detective, um, was that Art? I am. Yes. Um. Was was is that was there anything else to that? That would be about it. Other than that, there were a couple of odd details. She was found with a pink nightgown in in the wine cellar with her, and um. The head wound was closed, so it wasn't until the autopsy that they found out and were actually shocked to find out she had an 8.5-inch skull fracture. Um, do you, you, you want me to speak now? You can go ahead. Okay. There was a lot more than just a few odd details uh, from this crime scene, Esther, that uh, the Ramsey uh, guilt sayers in their rush to judgment often ignore um, everything in this crime scene points away from the Ramseys and points to an intruder. Um, you well, often, there weren't well, any well, footprints in the snow, Chris. You never well, there was the, that's the, was falsely reported on the media, and we can save that for another conversation. But there was you know there was no huge snow prints around there. The one thing that some uh, the people ignore was the duct tape that was. Um, put on her mouth there was no roll that was found in the house that matched it uh and it was torn on both ends and placed over her it was not cut uh the, the same mother's with the fibers were on the sticky side we've already we've already covered the fiber evidence the same with the parachute cord the parents didn't own any parachute cord and none could be found in the house uh, well they never did even, find the remainder of the package of, one of the, uh, one size of the, 12 underpants either one of the cords had been burned from the frame uh to it was almost to, to a sharp edge um, the, uh, cor the, the court had used to fashion the garret on her wrist, uh, was in such a way that, that she, it was more than she struggled, the tighter the knots became. Um, now this right here, I'm not, um, and, and let me say this right here too, uh, it's kind of a disclaimer. I know over the years in some of these cases, um, there's stuff that comes out later that, uh, you know, was proven that, Hey, this probably didn't happen this way. If I say something that has, you know, been, um, proven to be otherwise uh, or proven not to be true. Um, I'm not intentionally, you know, misleading people like, you know, you would do and have been doing uh, continuously on the show. And Thank you, Christopher. Uh, you're welcome. But there was a test that was done on her by Lou Smith and there was red marks and they were consistent in a rectangular shape with 3.5 centimeters that was consistent with the Azar st taser stun gun. I'm not saying that I believe that, but his test worked out with that. There was a high-tech footprint that did not match any of the footwear in the Ramsey's homes. 
and none of the police officers or crime personnel. The location of the footprint on the basement floor next to the victim's body suggested those boots was probably worn by the killer. Um, you're also forgetting that the killer's intent was to immobilize the victim, cover her mouth, and silence her screams with the parachute cord and remove her from the home. Alternatively, the, the intruder theory has lots of physical evidence to support it. There was a boot print found next to John Vinay's body, which did not belong to anyone in the family. There was a broken window in the basement, which uh, John Vinay, um, John had broke months before, that was probably the most likely point for an intruder. Um, I'm not going to go over the DNA test, or DNA stuff again, but the floors in the Ramsey's home were heavily carpeted, which makes it plausible for an intruder to have carried her downstairs without waking the family. Um, there was also uh, Bert's baseball bat was found outside in an unusual spot. There was a, uh, a vehicle that was, uh, I think it was a van. That was not known to anybody. It was not known to anybody in the neighborhood that was seen at the uh, uh, near the scene of the crime. There was also a latex glove that was found in one of the uh, garbage cans. This would explain why there was no fingerprints that was found on the duct tape. Um, there was a key that was missing from up under a mat that John Ramsey had played there. Everything in this points away from them and points to an intruder. And you conveniently forget this evidence. Chris, first of all. The little boy, Burke, owns a pair of high-tech shoes. Uh, was it the same size? I mean, uh, I mean, you're, you're, you're saying that Burke owned a pair of same, he owned a high-tech pair of shoes that was consistent with that. Is that what you're telling me? Well, I don't know, but law enforcement were wearing high-tech shoes. That was a popular brand at that time. Okay, but it just said that it matched none of them um, that was in, in, none of the law enforcement matched, matched them. And as for the, uh, you know, you're claiming she had stun gun marks. Werner Spitz said it was from lying on a, a buckle or, or a pebble or something. Uh, I don't, I'm not saying that I 100% believe that. I'm just saying I do not rule that out. Because well, Smith says he did it on a pig. They was consistent with the, the markers of 3.5 inches. It was the same thing for that stun gun. And she also had, I think, if I recall right, she also had one on her face, too. So that means they had, had it used, stunned her twice. The medical examiner can tell what, what a burn, an electrical burn mark looks like. The medical examiner didn't say that there was, well, was a stun bun, gun mark on her. I don't want to get too far into that. I mean, we can bring that back up next week because I'm not prepared to talk about the, the medical examiner. All I can talk about is what um, the evidence that was found um, on the I mean, at the crime scene that was overlooked by the Boulder police and their rush to judgment to convict the Ramseys in this case. Um, you know, you, you know, what happened? There was also a, um, I forgot about this, right? a flashlight that was found on the kitchen table that did not belong to, to the Ramseys. Well, I don't and know I where you're that. getting that. The flashlight was John's and no, the drawer he normally his. kept it in was empty. No, that, the flashlight on there was not his. All you have to do, Chris, is read the transcript of well, the police I, I know. interview. I wish you would start doing that sometime before we start this and we wouldn't have to go over it. Chris, it was John's flashlight. No, it John, was given to him by his son. It was on there did not, own, did not belong to anybody in the house. Now, if they can, somebody can prove me wrong on that, that's fine. But I've never seen that put in John's hands. That John the Andrew gave own, it to John. Did not own that uh, flashlight. Chris, where are you getting this? Well, it's I mean, in there's the transcript numerous, of the uh, police reports. The maid yeah, said it was numerous, John's. Uh, well, there's numerous um, things that you can go read this case on. Um, there was um, a drawer that John normally kept that flashlight in, and it was empty. Watch okay, the not, Dr. I'm, Phil interview with Burke Ramsey. Oh my God, you're gonna <laughs> uh, please, you're gonna. I mean, I mean, try to keep some bit of credibility uh, in your argument. I mean, you're gonna bring. We're talking Dr. about Phil. the the words of Burke <laughs> Ramsey, who was in the house on the night of the homicide. Dr. Phil said to him, "Yeah, I mean, I said your dad used the flashlight to put you to bed Burke. that night." And Burke said, I seen "Yes." Silly little Burke too, but you know that's. Uh, you know, we can do one on Burt one night if you want, but you know, I've seen. Uh, well, you but, brought up the flashlight. Well, I did some about the flashlight because I said it not, not belong to anybody Burt in the Ramsey house. confirmed that that flashlight belonged the to nine his father. Year old kid, the nine year old kid confirmed it. No, he was 29 when he said that. 
Oh, so 20 years later, he remembers the exact flashlight then. Why would he make that up? Why would he even remember such a small detail like that? It's not a small detail if it happens the night there was a murder in your house. So you're going to remember a flashlight just sitting out there that your father supposedly had when you slept through it the whole time? Phil McGraw said, so your dad said he used the flashlight to put you to bed that night. And Burke responded in the affirmative saying, yeah. Why would he do I that? I don't, Why would I don't he make recall. That up? Are you saying this is in the um, Dr. Phil interview? Yes. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recall that part of it. Um, so I, I was just, uh, you know, I can't um, really argue since I don't remember that part of it. I do remember the interview he had with him, uh, but I don't remember Burke saying that. Um, why would the intruder leave the flashlight on their kitchen counter? Well, I mean, why wouldn't they leave the the duct tape there? Well, I mean, lots of things disappeared, including the original pair of underpants. And so the, duct the rest of the size in the, twelve in package, the cord, and the cord just walked off. Right, there was time between the time of the homicide and the time that the police got there to remove evidence, which is clearly what happened. Oh, so they what? Well, where did they move it to? They probably flushed it down the toilet. They flushed a roll of duct tape and a uh, uh, parachute cord down the um, um, toilet. Well, it's not that hard to dispose of evidence. I mean, <laughs> all right, so now we've got the Ramsey's disposing of evidence at, at the crime scene. That's what you're telling me? What else happened to John Benet's clothing? I mean, so this theory, I mean, did, do you, did, the record, did they just make it up as you go? Chris, it is a fact that what the is fact? body was found in a pair of size 12 underpants. That was a package set day of the week. Okay. She was wearing the pair that was at the waistband. It said Wednesday, but they never did find Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, or yeah, Saturday. I mean, and that, that also had, I mean, we're going back over the same stuff again, but that also had, you know, other DNA in it too. So, I mean, I don't want to rehash the underwear stuff again. Um, I mean, because I, I've already made, you know, said all, all I can say about the DNA. Um I mean, I don't know what yes, else I can Chris, say. About we that. listened to you go on and on about the supposed DNA. Well, I didn't have evidence. a choice because, you know, when my uh, worthy opponent will not answer questions and ignores it, um, you know, I had to go on and on about it. Uh, I'm proud that you are, uh, you know, contacting some initiatives that uh, talk back tonight and uh, um, uh, you know, give me something to say. Well, Chris, if the father's fibers were found in the underpants crotch. Well, we, I know. We, we, we covered that. Um, last time i mean so i mean i'm sure you know we won't want to bore the people with you know the dna evidence and that you know that again but you know we can't i mean so we're, we're going to ignore that the parachute cord walked away the duct tape walked away um the key was missing and we're going to ignore all these pieces of evidence the footprint the boot prints just magically appears Okay, and we're going to ignore the fact that the pair of underpants Jean Benet must have been wearing before she was redressed in a size you twelve. Know, also, I don't, know, I don't know why uh, she was put in those size underpants. I don't know what size. So you think uh, the intruder dressed her in size twelve underpants? Is that? I, is that know, I don't know what. Um, I don't even know. I can't tell you what size twelve is for. I, I, don't, I don't even know how big that would be on a kid. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, six year old would you know, wear a to, size six. I've got, I, I, I've got to plead, you know, ignorance on there, there because I just don't know what size um, underwear is on, on a kid. A size 12 underpants on a slender six year old would come up, so, to, you could uh, pull so, them up so, to her so, shoulders. All right. So they, what you're saying is then the Ramseys intentionally bought her underpants that was that too big for her and put, put them on her after they sexually assaulted her and brutally murdered her? Well, they had. Somebody had to redress her to get wow. rid of evidence. Well, that did, but according to you, it didn't get rid of any evidence. It kept the evidence evidence there. Well, it kept enough evidence to prove who did it. Now, but to you, I mean, you know, you made this statement that uh, you know, well, evidence is overwhelming. I've yet to see one credible piece that you put through, to, you know, to prove their guilt. 
their child's body was found in their basement and okay. their fibers linked them is, to, I don't think to anybody's her lying. strangulation and sexual assault. And uh, I don't think anybody's denying that the body was found in the in the house. Um, you know, I don't know why. And that... most of law enforcement thought that the flashlight, which belongs to the father, was what caused the skull yeah, fracture. This is the same people who dealt with no murderers uh, in Boulder, Colorado. I mean, it's a zero crime rate. And but these were law and... enforcement officers. I don't care what they were. They didn't deal with crime. They were not. Prepared well, then supposedly case. there were no criminals in the area who could have crept into their well, house, you know, also killed the that, child, that, that, and fed her that, pineapple. That just a few months before, it said the pineapple such a red herring. You, um, there was a three blocks yes, away. Every bit of evidence was, that points to that John and Patsy Ramsey did this well, is a red herring. The how does the pineapple point to them? So now you're saying that uh, somewhere that. They get home and they put the kid to bed and then John unbeknownst to Patsy or maybe with her knowledge goes in there and molests her. And then she finds her and has wet the bed. And somewhere during this time, she's walked downstairs and ate some pineapple. Chris. Oh, yeah, that, that's believable. The yeah. last food John Benet ate, and it was shortly before she was killed, was pineapple. And Patsy Ramsey's fi her, her fingerprints are on the pineapple dish. So was Burke's. Right. So okay. Look, so you're ignoring. So you're bringing up that that their the pineapple their fingerprints are on a pineapple bowl, but you ignore the fact that there's no fingerprints on the the uh, duct tape. For the intruder to have done this, the intruder would have had to have fed her the pineapple. The pineapple, you know, uh, that's that. This is such a red herring in this case. I well, mean, if it's such a red herring, why do John and Patsy <laughs> adamantly deny that they've ever seen that pineapple before, or, or the or the bowl? I, you know, I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. But I think the the, the pineapple thing is just, I, you know, it's it it reminds me of the people that uh, uh, go with the um, talk about the barking dog in the O.J. Simpson case. I mean, it, I just I don't know why you hang your hat on. You're so desperate. You're so grasping at straws that you're bringing that, up O.J. How am I grasping at straws? I'm trying to figure out how in you know your theory that they molest her, uh, she wets the bed and she eats pineapple. All before they kill her, and then they cover this crop scene up. I mean, come on. Well, the evidence would suggest that John Benet did have a toileting accident of some kind that night, and the evidence would suggest she ate pineapple, and the evidence would suggest that she was strangled by Patsy, whose fibers are in the ligature. Yeah, and we've already covered all sexually all the assaulted you know, and I mean, on previous and occasions broken, broken. You know, we can go through that too because there's other disputing evidence uh, of the people's going to uh, about the sexual assault. Um, um, you know, let's, uh, the last thing I was going to say, but um, I mean, I just I don't know why that. Um, now I'm repeating myself, but I want to do that. Why we ignore evidence that points away and we hang our hat on such you know, small things like that that point to them um, because there isn't any evidence that points away oh so not the 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 footprints that was found on the body i mean we've already covered the dna yeah, chris there week. were no footprints found on the body there was no footprints found near the body there was and a high tech I'm not, I'm not mean, I'm sorry if i did not mean say on there was no foot there was not a foot Footprint that was found. There was a high tech body. boot print in the basement. Burke Ramsey owned high tech. And there tech was boots. a second pair. There was a second boot print that was not high tech that was suggested that there was a second intruder. Chris, lots of people went in and out of their basement. Not really? Including law enforcement that day. It didn't match any of the law enforcement's boots. It did not match anybody's boot. It did what now? It, it was just a, a high. Tech just a high print. tech boot that just showed the, up. Just the logo. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, Jean Benet had green tinsel in her hair, which there was a green garland wrapped around their, their yeah, staircase. Yeah, I remember there was a, uh, 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 what I broke in um, Christmas ornament or something. Um, is that what well, you're talking about? I'm talking about that there was green garland wrapped around the staircase leading from the bedroom floor down to the kitchen and there was that green garland was in John Benet's hair so okay. somebody carried her 
carried the body after she was unconscious. Yeah, I don't think nobody's likely. disputing that. Uh, the, the body was carried downstairs. I've never said that, that she was walking walk down there um, on her own. You're more um, alluding to that fact that she got up and ate pineapple. Well, she did eat pineapple. I mean, do you know? I mean, when did this take place, though? Before the molestation or after? We only know that at some point that night she ate pineapple from a dish on her own table, which both of her parents adamantly deny that she did that for whatever their reasons. And we know that she was sexually assaulted that night and on previous occasions. We know she sustained a skull fracture and we know that she was strangled. And we know that the, the parents' physical evidence link them to the strangulation and to the sexual assault. No, it does not. I mean, first of all, you're going to say that, you know, and I'll, I'll come back to this just for the simple reason. You're going to sit, sit there and try to say that John Ramsey went in there sexually assaulted her and left no DNA, left no skin cells, and left no pubic hair. Yeah. He left his boy. fibers. We've already went over that, you know. The, and I've explained the to you there's, that there's, there's, there's only one you. way this could have happened. That the, you don't, I can't help it that you don't understand this. The sweater um, was I mean, never laundered. Is, there Neither were the underpants. Both the here. sweater and the I'm underpants not, were not, taken from straight out I'm of the not, package. I'm not going back over something we've already had a film on. You're it's like John a... Ramsey. You filibuster and have hissy oh, fits oh, the... when <laughs> you can't answer a question. Oh, heaven. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a second. You're saying I can't answer questions? Now, this is the person who the last two weeks, you know, sound like a broken record repeating the same thing over and over and over. I, on the other hand, if I don't know something, I will admit it. Chris, if you don't know something, you read from Pro Ramsey websites off of your no, phone. No, I don't come from. Pre, I don't read from Pro Ramsey websites or anti Ramsey websites. The stuff that I have pulled up for is, uh, you know, straight from police records, FBI records. Uh, you know, I do have to um, refresh my memory at times to time because I don't remember stuff like this. But you, you know, claim that that it was never confirmed that that flashlight belonged to John, which clearly it was yes, by I multiple still stand sources. By that. And if you can, I mean, if you can put it up there. Um, you know, I'll admit when I'm wrong, unlike you, uh, who, you know, is going to go, you know, repeat their stuff over and over and over until it gets true. Um, you know, you say something over and, and loud enough, you hope people will believe it. Right. Um, well. Patsy Ramsey told the responding officer that she put Sean Benet to bed in a red turtleneck top. That red turtleneck top was found on top of John Benet's bathroom sink, was not found on the body. And when Patsy was shown a, a picture of that top in, in, during a police interview, she burst into tears. And it was one of only two times she broke down during the police interview. The other time when she was asked about whether or not she herself or her sisters had been victims of abuse. You know that'll be a, that would be a good one to talk about too because you know I never understand why how people make these um assumptions about somebody in an interview uh oh they act like they're guilty you know how is somebody supposed to act uh when they're being interviewed like this right here uh, you know calm or crying you know so that I, I, I don't I don't get that um but most people don't forget what they put their child to bed in the last time well, they saw well, their she, kid. No, I mean, uh, they probably don't. But when you have a murder and a sexual assault takes place, I don't know what happened with those you know, redressing of the clothes. Um, there was something else I forgot to bring up to a while ago. That the uh, the you remember the um, God, what was it? The peanut shaped um, uh, packing material. No. Was what are you talking you about? There was there was a phone that was tracked inside. Well, I'm sure the intruder brought it in. Well, I mean, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the intruder brought peanut packing foam into the house along with pineapple and size 12 underpants. So, I mean, let's come back to this underpants thing again. All right. So if what you're saying is, I mean, what what, what does the underpants have to play in this? You're saying that they undressed her and redressed her in underpants? Yes. So why would they buy... A, a, a size 12 for her according to patsy she purchased a package set of size 12 day of the week underpants for her 12 year old niece and but the 
the rest of the package had disappeared. Only Patsy would have known where those were, and they were okay. in the basement. So they disposed of all of this evidence, like the parachute cord, the, the uh, duct tape, and but they were sloppy enough to put her in the wrong set size underwear. Yeah, they're not criminal masterminds, and they were in a panic. Okay, so they're, they they dispose of some of the evidence, but they leave other incriminating evidence behind. I mean, they're, they're, they're that kind of a mistake. So you're suggesting the intruder redressed her in size 12 underpants and was nice enough to pick the correct I mean, why would you the week. Why would they redress her anyway? Because the original pair of underpants was going to contain evidence of who it was who'd sexually assaulted her and that that had happened. That's why her pubic area was wiped down. Uh, so the blood that was found in there, uh, that that wasn't... Um, no, those that were... Was... That, that was John Denae's. Okay, then that's signs of a sexual assault, is it not? Pardon? Wait, where, what are you saying? You just saying? said... You just said that they put the, they did away with those underpants because it would have signs of a sexual assault. Now you're right. Getting... It was just some small, like faint drops. At, Which one is? It? I mean, <laughs> she had continued after she'd already been wiped. So, uh, so, so there, there is sexual assault now in these panties as well, or these evidence of it. Yes. So, what happened to the other other pair? Most likely, they were flushed down the toilet. So you so they flushed duct tape, rope, and underwear down the toilet. I'm sure they flushed. My guess about what happened to the underpants is that they flushed them down the toilet, or somebody did. The, I mean, have you ever tried to flush underpants down the toilet? It would have been a six year old's underpants. I mean, they, they're just, just pretty small. Um, and and then the duct tape got flushed down the toilet. I don't know what they did with that, Chris. And the rope got flushed down the toilet. Well, the duct tape had Patsy's sweater fibers on it. So. We, we've already, we, yeah, we've already went over on that. the sticky had, side. How did it get on the sticky whole, side, Chris? We had a whole uh, episode about that. You know, there, about it getting know. on the sticky side of the duct tape. I don't remember we where talk, you explained yeah, that away because well, you kept changing the subject. No, I did. I have to explain that in the first when we first went over that. Um, if you want to go back and watch it, you can go back and see where I explained that. So there's no, I'm not rehashing the past ones up there. Um, I mean, there's no sense in that. Uh, I mean, I'm just, we, we, we did, you know, 30 minutes on the fiber evidence. All right. Well, a pair of John Binet's pants were inside out on her bathroom floor and they had fecal stains in them. And John Binet had repeated problems with toileting accidents. And when John and Patsy are asked about it in interviews and also the little boy Burke, they all deny it, even though it's been confirmed by multiple sources. And her toilet hadn't been flushed. There was waste in it. And there was a diaper package pulled part of the way off of her uh, shelf. Like so how many times did she go to the bathroom then? You've got her going in the bed. You've got her going in the toilet. You've got her going in a diaper. That night, something happened. And they went, I, think, I mean, three times. Well, the, the lead detective on the case thought that Patsy lost it, basically just yeah. flipped her lid. With this uh, no, child. no history, no history of that ever, and she didn't even use corporal punishment, and she just no. Well, that's not what one of the maids said. One of the maids uh, said one of the she maids? used one of the maids said she used to be able to hear screams coming from the bathroom when Patsy would take John Bonet in there with her to clean her after she'd wet the bed. A maid said this. Yeah, and there's a picture of John Binet with what really obviously looks like a thumbprint bruise on her arm. And Cyril Wecht, the pathologist, said on an episode oh, of Geraldo, Cyril Wecht. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great that, one to bring up. <laughs> that that was a thumbprint bruise. Yeah, but Cyril John Binet's grandmother expert, said um, it happened when a, 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 a hamster him. cage fell on her arm. I mean, you realize that, don't you? Cyril Wecht is an expert for whoever hires him. Well, nobody hired him. Uh, he wrote a book off, off of it and made a lot of money. I don't know how much money he made, but he did write a book. Yeah, Cyril, Cyril did okay with that. Well, Steve Thomas, who was the lead investigator on the case, also wrote a book. And he believed that Patsy... Uh, I'm sure was, he did. I mean, the whole Boulder police did in this rush to judgment. 
Well, I don't know what they rushed to judge since the Ramses they weren't no arrested. They had, they had one murder there in the past year. So if Boulder was such a perfect, calm, quiet, crime-free town, how did how did this dangerous predator manage to find its way well, into you know, as the I mentioned all houses last time, There was 38 sexual offenders that lived in Boulder at that time. Um, and I just brought up that the, the child that had been sexually assaulted three months before Jean Benet that lived a few uh, blocks away. That the well, father came in and caught in the middle of the night. John Binet yeah. had been repeatedly sexually abused, according to the yeah. autopsy. Yeah, we'll we'll discuss that when we go with the autopsy. Um, I'll be prepared for that. Uh, I'm not getting an autopsy right now. Um, that's that's all I have. Chris, the I mean, audio is the audio is breaking up. Oh, I said that. That's all. I, that's, I mean, I, that's all I have is my final, was my final statements. I mean, I, I have nothing else to add to it. Okay. Do you have anything you'd like to add, final? Uh, just that it's unfortunate that you it are is. just absolutely, completely unwilling to accept what really happened that night. Does that make you feel better? You know, when you say that at the end of each, you know, segment that. You know, the, well, Chris, does that, does, that help, does that help convince you more? You're going around spewing pro Ramsey. I'm not, you know, the one thing that I've spewed propaganda. is propaganda. This is not propaganda. There you go again. I mean, you, this is not propaganda. But, um, you know, you, you're going to believe whatever you want to believe. I mean, I, if you want to ignore this, that's fine. You know, that's on you. Um, but, I mean, the evidence obviously points away from them. Whatever you need to believe. Um. Uh, let's um. Let's well, we'll talk off of all this right there. Um, Esther, it's a pleasure as always. I'll see you next time. Okay, I love you, Chris. Love you. Good night. Good night. Um. Oh wait.